that I'm wearing is, uh, represents the American Forces Network, which uh, when I was uh, serving my two years in the Army, uh, I went to Europe as a radio announcer for the American Forces Network. And uh, at 19 years old, I had no clue what I wanted to do to, you know, professionally the rest of my life. And uh, it was, uh, uh, I'll get to your questions, which is first, it's Steve Binder, uh, B as in Baker, I-N-D-E-R, like Binder, and uh, Colonel Parker used to call me Bindle. <laughs> I don't know where he came up with that name, but that was his favorite name for me when he was mad at me. Uh, I, as I said, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and uh, I just knew because I had a great family that I grew up in. My parents really kind of uh, devoted their, their lives to my older sister and myself. And uh, so it was really uh, a case of where uh, I registered in college in pre-med, but I hated to dissect frogs and rabbits and knew that was not going to be what I was going to do the rest of my life. And uh, it was my mother who encouraged me to uh, take a few courses while I was in college in telecommunications. And uh, I became uh, a radio announcer at my college radio station. And uh, I fell in love with it. I was kind of introverted uh, as a kid, uh, but I found when I was in front of a microphone, uh, I had no inhibitions. I always felt I was talking to one person. And uh, I never lost that feeling even when I was directing. Uh, I am primarily a director. Uh, in in uh, movies, the director is king, as we all know. In, uh, in other art forms, uh, including television, it's really the producers uh, or the people who put up all the money who have all the power. So I am primarily and love directing. That is my craft and that's my uh, passion. I only became a producer, uh, what they call a hyphenate, where I became a producer director uh, in order to protect my directing skills that I didn't want somebody who was frustrated because they weren't a director kind of telling me what to do <laughs> as a director. And uh, therefore it worked out really well when I was able to, uh, outside of reporting to the networks and their executives, uh, I had to answer to hardly anybody on stage and, and especially the producers because I was the producer. And uh, that, that proved to be the, uh, the key to my entire career of uh, doing original uh, specials and movies and what have you, uh, because I never wanted to do one thing only. Uh, and I became very eclectic doing all kinds of different kinds of shows. And uh, it was like starting all over again after you finished whatever you were doing. Uh, you couldn't rest on your laurels. You couldn't do a, for instance, a successful situation comedy and uh, and and be on it for if it, if you were lucky it would last for three years or longer, and uh, I just didn't want to do the same thing every week. I wanted to have a new experience, and I found it by uh, starting with a piece of blank paper and trying to figure out in my head 
and on paper uh, what the concept was, what was going to be the beginning and what was going to be the middle and end. And uh, it, it was a real challenge. And my, my skills really, uh, because when I started in the business, I knew nothing. And I went from uh, getting a job in the mailroom uh, at a local television station uh, that I got to meet everybody and I met the program director and next thing you know, and I won't bore you with how it all happened, it just happened. Uh, I was a full director for that station uh, within a few months. And, uh, and I went from there locally uh, to becoming a, a network director. And, uh, and then I got all these opportunities and phone calls asking if I was available to do uh, certain uh, star shows. And in the old days, uh, you know, we created original primetime uh, ideas. And we would just get an artist like uh, an Elvis Presley, uh, a, uh, a Smokey Robinson, uh, whoever, uh, who just come uh, and say, okay, uh, we want to work together and do a, a tailor-made special uh, using all of my talents of singing or dancing or acting. And uh, we'd start from scratch. We had no ideas when I would assemble my team. And the team would consist of writers, uh, uh, art directors, set designers, uh, uh, audio, uh, video experts, and so forth. And that's where I learned the craft, really. Uh, I did go to college and I did take a lot of courses, uh, but I felt it's got to be in your blood because it's not glamorous. It's hard work. And you have to be prepared if you're thinking about a career in the entertainment business in any respect. Uh, right from the very beginning, even if you start out as a go what they call a gopher, go for coffee for the producer <laughs> or the director, uh, go for their uh, clothes that are at the cleaners or whatever, uh, but you become uh, kind of, you know, available to do anything they ask you to do. And I always took it seriously from the very first job I had, uh, I wanted to be the best at it that I could possibly be. And instead of waiting for them to tell me what they wanted me to do, I was the first one at work. I was the last one to leave. And uh, it's really important uh, in the business because there's so much competition and you want to pop out from all that competition and show you're the best. Uh, one of my uh, favorite assistants started on a, on a show that you might have seen called Pee Wee's Playhouse. I was the executive producer on that. And uh, one of my gophers became my personal assistant after uh, we finished uh, the Playhouse. And uh, it was because he was twice as fast uh, doing errands for everybody as any of the other uh, gophers that we hired. And uh, he was, ready, willing, and able. He, I remember he had a skateboard. <laughs> he would always be on that skateboard. And if he had uh, you know, a message to deliver or scripts or whatever, he was, uh, he, he was back uh, before any of the other guys even got to the place they had to, to deliver whatever their, uh, their job happened to be at, at the moment. And uh, I'd like to hear from you and what, what you'd like me to. Uh, sure. No. Uh, so uh, we already have some student questions emailed to me. Do you mind if I ask them? Sure. And guys, if, if you guys have any questions here live, go ahead and message them in the chat. Um, one of the students, they wanted to know, what do you recommend that we study if we want to work in television? There's a, a little booklet that was published by the Directors Guild of America. And it was one of our most famous directors, uh, Ilya Kazan. Uh, if you wanna see a great movie, uh, an old movie, you should uh, either rent or, or uh, get a copy of On the Waterfront. 
with uh, Marlon Brando uh, in the lead. It's a great film. It's about the labor unions and he's a boxer who's a little bit slow and he's, uh, uh, it was directed by Ilya Kazan who made a lot of great films. And Kazan uh, lectured at Weimaran College or University and he wrote this fabulous book uh, or pamphlet called What is a Director? And the, the best knowledge you can acquire if you're getting into the business and you have aspirations to climb up the ladder and, and uh, become a director or a producer or a writer or whatever is real experience. And, uh, you know, so, I don't think in my college experience, uh, there was, I, I learned everything I learned from the people I worked with. And uh, I was uh, not afraid to be as honest as I could be, admit when I didn't know anything. And when I would ask uh, a cameraman, a director of photography, uh, you know, share with the actors and so forth, uh, they were more than anxious to help you, especially when you're young and you're a student. And th the best way to get to people in the industry uh, is when you're a student, because uh, you can flatter all of our egos and say uh, you want to come out and, and interview, <laughs> interview us for the college newspaper or the high school newspaper or whatever. And, uh, you know, I think you'll find most people in the industry uh, are their doors wide open to to uh, talk to you and and let you uh, ask questions of them like you're doing with me right now. But I think as far as is uh, it's just as important to know what you don't know as what you do know. And uh, don't be afraid to to ask people who have had a few more years than you have lived and they have a little more experience than you have. And don't be afraid to ask them for help because more, at least in, in my world and my friends, they're more than anxious to help students. And uh, so I don't think you really know uh, whether you're suited for the entertainment business or not until you do it, because it's not just having a business card with your name on it and your title as producer, director, whatever, or hanging out at, at uh, restaurants or bars, uh, it's hard work and you have to put in long hours. And many people who come running saying, I wanna be in show business, they hate it once they, they get the job and they just aren't prepared for the hard work that it takes to, to, to be successful in the business. Uh, you know, I, I used to have a reputation of, uh, you know, never getting tired when I was working because I never was. I loved it so much that, that uh, you know, when I had to put in, uh, instead of just a normal eight hour day that you would do it as an office worker, uh, I would spend sometimes, especially when I was doing the post-production on a show, uh, I would, uh, spend 14 or 18 hours at the studio uh, or the facility uh, editing and so forth uh, a day. And I never got tired. Uh, I would have young guys <laughs> who were editors come into the facility and, and I'd burn them out after eight hours. They, they'd be so tired, they'd say, I have to go home. And they'd have to bring another editor in because I didn't want to go home. I wanted to keep working. And it never, uh, the word work never, to this day, uh, has never been in my head. Uh, you know, I don't want to tell any of the executives, but I would have done all this my whole career for free. <laughs> I didn't need to be paid. <laughs> I loved it so much. It was truly, you followed your passion. And, and if you're following your passion, you never had to work a day in your life, right? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, when people would look forward to a day off where they could go enjoy themselves, I hated it. I didn't want any time off. I wanted to work. I loved it. That's great. Uh, so 
Uh, one of the, we have a lot, uh, we had quite a few questions about the 68 Elvis uh, special, um, the comeback special. So um, first of all, you have done so much stuff in your career. So uh, for, for this, this one, we'll just focus on this question. What was it like directly working with Elvis Presley on this comeback special that is arguably one of the most important uh, televised musical performances in history next to the Beatles on Ed Sullivan? What was that like from inception to production? It was, it was easy. Uh, Elvis uh, instinctively knew, knew that uh, he needed to rejuvenate, rejuvenate his career. Uh, he had gone in the army and was in Germany for two years. By the time he came back to the United States, uh, we'd already experienced the British invasion uh, the Beatles were here. Uh, I had worked with the Rolling Stones on a film called The Tammy Show uh, with, with uh, Leslie Gore, who was the star of the show at the time. She was the most famous uh, as a singer, a pop singer, and a rock and roll. And uh, we had Chuck Berry on the show. We had the Beach Boys. Uh, Diana Ross and the Supremes were on it. Uh, the Beach Boys were on it and so forth. And it became, uh, it wasn't a television project. It was in, uh, it was theatrical and, and released in theaters all across America. And every single year it gets more important in, in uh, you know, the idea that out of, I think, 11 acts or whatever, nine of those acts are today, right now, as I'm talking to you, uh, all in the Hall of Fame of uh, the Rock and Roll uh, Academy. And uh, who'd ever thought that? Because when I worked with them all, it was just an accident that we booked all these famous uh, acts uh, in one show at one time. I mean, at that time, they only had a couple of uh, hit records and uh, they were certainly not considered icons. Uh, they were famous in rock and roll, like a Chuck Berry, uh, but uh, they nobody thought they would uh, in uh, 2023 <laughs> they would be as famous, if not more, than they were when they were kids and just starting out in the in the record business. But it's 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 I've always considered. Uh, Success in the industry is uh, talent, timing, and the most important ingredient is luck. You have to be lucky uh, because you never know where your next opportunity is going to come from. And unfortunately, in many, many cases, it never comes. But that doesn't deter people who have the bug and the passion from staying in it. And uh, working with Elvis was easy. He was hungry to do something new. Uh, and uh, when I pitched him the show, because I had already put my team together, it was the first time he didn't do uh, the show for his own uh, company and, and people he worked with in the past doing those movies and so forth. He kind of, uh, there was nobody on my team who came from the Elvis Presley world except Elvis. And uh, I was a little concerned because when I told him what I wanted to do uh, and asked him what he liked or didn't like or what he wanted to be taken out, he said, Steve, I love it all, let's do it. And uh, he never balked. And uh, I was shocked because I'd heard so many stories that how he was controlled by Colonel Parker and uh, you know, and people were so intimidated by him. And I wasn't, when I work with anybody, uh, I always figure I'm there to do a job to make them look good. And, and uh, I treat them all on equal footing. I don't put them on a pedestal. I don't uh, tell them how special they are. Uh, and we worked really hard on that special together uh, to make, uh, we never knew how it was gonna turn out, uh, you know, especially with Colonel Parker insisting uh, that he just do a Christmas show and and have a Christmas tree in the background and and sing 20 Christmas songs. I never 
thought I wanted to do that. I didn't know Elvis Presley. Uh, I, by that time of his life, he was kind of made into a caricature. Uh, you know, he was great when I first saw him, uh, when he made his first television appearance on what was the most popular show in America called The Ed Sullivan Show. He was great. He just went on with his uh, bass player and his guitarist, and he sang those early, early hit songs like, like Blue Suede Shoes and, uh, you know, Hound Dog and things like that. But as he became more famous, uh, he was treated like he was a novelty act. And uh, they had him dressed up in a tuxedo and they, they had him uh, on a lot of comedy shows where they would kind of make fun of him uh, on one of the big shows. Uh, they put an actual hound dog in front of him, live one, and they dressed him in a tuxedo having him sing hound dog. And it was ludicrous. And, uh, you know, and he knew as, as uh, he was getting older and uh, rock and roll was really uh, sweeping the whole country uh, that he, was, he wasn't sure whether uh, young kids in those days would even accept him again. He, he was more nervous about bombing on, on television and uh, his experience on television turned him off of television. When I met him, he didn't want to do the television special. Uh, I had to kind of convince him because we were around the same age. I was in the music business as well as television at the time. And when he came to my office and saw all of our gold records on the wall, he relaxed and uh, he knew we could speak the same language. Because, uh, you know, I don't come to the, to, a, to an artist or a stage uh, saying I'm as talented as they are, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just a really good director who can relax them and bring the best performance out of them. And many times when you're watching movies, you kind of put yourself in the, in the role of the hero of the movie. And, uh, you know, whether it's Tom Cruise in, in Top Gun or, or whatever, uh, you kind of, uh, when you're watching it, you kind of think of yourself as the lead actor. Well, I never felt that way about rock stars. Uh, my job, I felt, was putting you in the first row of the concert so you could get a real good look at them and see them from all sides. And uh, Elvis uh, never, uh, when we worked together, uh, you know, we worked as friends, as equals. And... Uh, you know, there was no ego involved. Uh, he never, uh, you know, he, he kind of adapted to my family of, of the crew that I put together and became friends with all of us. And uh, that's why uh, when I really fought very hard for the last song on the show, uh, If I Can Dream, uh, you know, the Colonel and, and that whole uh, Elvis Presley world uh, didn't want him to do it. They wanted him to sing a Christmas song and uh, were insisting. And when Elvis heard the song about, you know, uh, which is more relevant, I think, today than it was in 1968 when I did the special, uh, it's about brotherhood and love and, uh, and uh, you know, the idea that, that uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, such a division in our country now of people who, who uh, aren't willing to open their minds. And, uh, you know, Elvis was, I think it would shock a lot of people to know how much he cared uh, when our presidents uh, were assassinated. Uh, uh, Martin Luther King was assassinated. Elvis really cared about all those things. And so he was easy to work with. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I never uh, saw or talked to him again after the special. So my whole experience with him was about six months of my uh, devoted uh, time uh, in doing the special. And, uh, you know, and he died way too young. I knew in talking to him, 
all the things he wanted to do, but never did. So that's a good lesson for all of you that don't just think about it or talk about it, try and do it. Uh, today, if you wanna be a director, you know, you don't have to wait until the university that you go to or, or wherever you learn, you learn uh, about cameras. Uh, today, the cameras are so cheap uh, that you can make your own movies. You don't need to wait for uh, people to, to, to uh, loan you their equipment or, or whatever. Uh, and uh, I, I have a, a friend now, a very young friend, who uh, he, uh, well, in college, he made a little movie that won the, the uh, Student Emmy Award from the Academy of Television. And, and he got to direct his first feature film. Uh, and I don't think he's, he's uh, even 25 yet. I think he's probably around 23 or 24. And he just made a movie that's out right now. Uh, and it's called, uh, it's a, based on a true story. And I think it's called The American Murderer or something. And this, it's a true story and the guy is still at large, uh, but he uh, followed all the documentaries that were made on him and all the news stories, sure. made a dramatic story about him. And he got a studio to pick it up and distribute it all over the world. And uh, so I'm real high on his future and what he's, he's uh, you know, he's already signed for another movie to, to do. So there are all kinds of opportunities. Sure. When I started in the business, there were only, uh, and I'll call them stores, but there were only three stores. There was NBC, CBS, and ABC. Fox hadn't even begun yet. And uh, if you didn't work for one of those three, uh, you were relegated to, uh, to do what they call the syndicated show, which is an independent, low-budget show, if you were lucky enough to get one of them to invest the money in you. And today it, it's completely the opposite. You can go on the internet and make a big name for yourself and get a million followers because you've created something unique and, and individual and your personality and so forth. And I've never had to yell or scream at anybody on a stage. Uh, communication is super important. And, and as I said from the very beginning, People want to help you uh, when you're starting out. You just have to be honest and, and uh, ask for their help uh, and not be shy. And uh, it, it, it's amazing to me, uh, you know, how many people I've been able to meet and, and work with over the years. And we're still friends, uh, those that are around. And, uh, you know, I, I've loved, Every experience, even when I did the holiday uh, Star Wars uh, special, which was designed for kids, it wasn't designed for uh, to be another Star Wars multi-million dollar feature film. And uh, there's an army of, of, of uh, older people now who were uh, kids when they watched that, when, when it came out on, on the network on CBS for two hours. And it had the whole cast of the movies of Star Wars. And, uh, you know, it, every week I get at least one letter uh, or more of, of people who say it affected their childhood, it affected their lives. That's the amazing thing about being in, in, in the entertainment business, if you're lucky enough to be in it and get in it, uh, is how many lives you affect how many people take it so seriously. Uh, I, I have a lot of friends who played uh, doctors on, on television or they played uh, policemen on television or lawyers or whatever. And their fans uh, believe they're the real thing. They don't believe uh, or, or they haven't accepted that they're just actors <laughs> reading lines. They're asking for medical advice and legal advice and, and uh, you know, help with a, a police problem they have or whatever. And it, it always amazes me, but that little television set that you watch 
TV from or the or your computers that you uh, get on the internet, how real they are to, to people. And, sure. And uh, how important uh, certain things that they watch are to them. And uh, I have a lot of respect for, for uh, the medium, uh, but I think you can find it in every walk of life. I have a, a student, because I've spent my life, uh, even though I've been very busy professionally working in the entertainment business, I've also taught a college course in directing uh, for years. And uh, I've had some really terrible students and I've had some great ones. And one in particular is a, a, a novelist and he's a, a bestseller uh, for Simon and Schuster in espionage. And he's, he's great. He has about 12 uh, bestsellers uh, for the publisher, which is the biggest in the world called Simon and Schuster. And uh, he, he and I still are in contact and we talk, he lives in Colorado these days, but uh, you know, you can find uh, creativity. Uh, you know, if, if you're a producer or a director in television, I assure you, you're not hanging out hanging out at bars trying to pick up girl, pretty girls or, or vice versa. Busy, uh, huh? Super busy, time. huh? You're busy and yeah. you're tired a lot of the time and you need your, your rest and your sleep to, to uh, get up in the morning and have a, another full day of, of work. And, uh, you know, so uh, if you're approached uh, in any field, of somebody who's really legitimate and it's important that you know who you work with. It's important to know what their background is and it's easy to find it out now on Wikipedia and, and uh, the internet. Uh, but uh, because, uh, you know, it's, it's not talk, it's show me. Even when Marlon Brando, who is considered one of the greatest American actors in history, did The Godfather, they made him audition for it. They didn't just say, oh, it's Marlon Brando, we'll just make him an offer. And uh, uh, they wanted to see if he could play the role of the Godfather. And uh, even though he had made a, a, a many, many hit movies and been in many hit, hit plays on Broadway and so forth, they still wanted to see it for their own eyes. And, and uh, you know, uh, Creativity isn't all about show business. It's no matter what you do. My dad owned a gas station and I used to work for him when I was going to high school. And, uh, you know, I, I thought that was a very creative job. <laughs> and, and I loved going down to his gas station and pumping gasoline and changing tires and, and things and thought maybe my life is going to be uh, working in a gas station. And uh, I'd, I'd have been happy and I'd have put everything I have into it, I'm sure. But I was lucky enough and fortunate enough to find my path. So it's all about work ethic. And, you know, we, we thank you for reiterating that. I have a, we'll go with a couple more uh, questions because I know it's getting kind of late for our kids in Eastern Europe who, who are here. Um, Leonardo had a good question for you, but Leonardo, I'll let you ask it. Uh, go ahead and unmute. Uh, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what do you think that is very important or even like fundamental when creating a documentary or an educational documentary? So for example, the storytelling, the structure, or even like the editing and the cinematography? I'm uh, real excited because I think documentaries today dominate uh, interest in the in the viewers worldwide uh, in may of this year paramount plus is going to release a two-hour feature theatrical documentary on me and elvis and uh it, it's called uh, if you're looking for trouble uh, uh elvis and steve uh come back and it'll be on all the paramount plus platforms uh, like MTV and CBS and so forth. And 
the director of it is uh, John Scheinfeld. And John Scheinfeld is one of the best documentary directors in the business today. And I'm very excited because I, when they first approached me and said, can we do this? I said, what's new about Elvis Presley that hasn't already been seen or said? And he said, please give me the opportunity to show you. And I saw a rough cut of it uh, about a week or so ago, uh, the first one, and I was blown away. I thought he did a fantastic job of explaining, uh, you know, the, the, the buildup into the 68 comeback special and what was going on in Elvis's career in the meantime and how we work together. So I'm real excited about uh, when Paramount releases it of, of seeing it on television. And I think I'll be the first uh, basically television uh, producer director to even get a documentary made on them. But uh, I think documentary film directors uh, are incredibly creative and talented. And uh, I've seen some of the best ones uh, in the past year, uh, you know, that, that have really excited me when watching them and they're informative, uh, they're real, and uh, you know they are what they are. And uh, a lot of times in dramas, even the Elvis movie that Baz Luhrmann did, and I was one of the creative consultants on it, uh, took uh, theatrical license, what they call it, and made up a few things. Like I never went to the Hollywood sign as the film opened, uh, with Elvis, uh, you know, uh, thing, things like that. Uh, and they don't bother me when you're doing a dramatic interpretation uh, of reality, but documentaries are real and they're exciting. That's that's great advice. And uh, yeah, I th you just answered like four questions with your one answer because there are a bunch of questions about the accuracy versus reality. So thank you for addressing that stuff. So um, Steve, I know it's getting kind of late for our Eastern European kids, but before we let you go, what kind of advice is someone who's so accomplished as yourself, you have, you have done, I mean, and we're all excited to check out the Paramount Plus uh, special that you had mentioned if you're looking for trouble. So definitely everyone be on the lookout for that. Um, what kind of advice would you have for these kids as they go out and figure out what they want to do with their lives? Follow your dreams and don't listen to anybody when they're negative. I don't care if somebody says, you'll never make it. I'm going to make it if I want to make it. And, and uh, just don't get uh, depressed or deterred because you heard, uh, because you're going to hear in pursuit of any career, you're going to hear a lot of negativity and most of it is just out of jealousy. So just stick to your guns and do what you want to do and follow your dreams. Thank you so much, Steve. And thank you for spending these 40 minutes with us. And, you know, we, we can't show our appreciation enough. But before I end the meeting for all, before I end it for everybody, I'm going to allow everyone to unmute to say thank you to Mr. Binder for taking the time out of his valuable day to come and talk to you guys. So thank you so much, Steve. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.